Hey, what's up everyone? It's Tim here, ready with another Metallica guitar lesson. Today we'll be looking at how to play Motor Breath, which is another great song off of their debut album, Kill Em All. This is my second full-length Metallica song. The other one was Jump in the Fire. So if you haven't checked that one out yet, be sure to do that. Link is in the description. And if you love Metallica, be sure to subscribe and hit like. Because, listen guys, I'm going to be doing every single one of their songs off of every album. Full tabs are going to be on the screen for you. So get ready to make your dreams come true and learn Metallica. And you can put your saxophone away because we're going to be doing this on the guitar. Now here's the intro riff. Let's go. The trickiest part about this intro is really understanding 16th notes. So if you need a refresher on how to count those, I did a video on that a while back that uh, that should get you up to speed. You can click on the link up here or I'll put it in the description as well if you want to check it out later. But let's get going here. So we start with three power chords starting on the A on our bottom string. We just walk up chromatically to the B and we keep our palm mute off. And now after those, then we put our palm mute down. And this is where the rhythm starts. A one and a two and a three and a four E and a, okay? And that's the rhythm that we're gonna do for the first four measures. So do that rhythm up on the seventh fret, slide down to the third fret and repeat that rhythm. Come up to the fifth fret and repeat that rhythm. Go down to the second fret and repeat that rhythm. There's a little bit of a trick here though. Okay, so we're gonna do that exact rhythm, but on beat four, you just slide up back to uh, the seventh fret. Okay, and you don't have to be uh, accurate about what notes you hit, it's just a random slide. The important thing is to keep your pick hand doing 16th notes, so it's. Okay, it's just a random bunch of notes there as you slide back up the string and arrive back for your repeat on the seventh fret. Now, you could just keep things simple and do that exact same rhythm through the next four bars as well, but uh, if you want it accurate, true to the original recording, the rhythm does change a little bit. Uh, on the next couple of measures, we have this rhythm. One and a two and a three E and a four E and a. So. And just filling in a couple of the 16ths that we're missing there. On beat three, there's one extra 16th there. And now we, go down to the third fret and repeat that rhythm that we just did and then uh, up to the fifth fret and the rhythm changes a little bit here again it's missing a 16th at the very end of beat four this time one and a two and a three e and a four e and down to the second fret and repeat that rhythm okay here's the whole thing nice and slow And then we get into our next riff that is in the intro, but it also is the verse riff. So here we go with that. Now I see some people play this riff as starting with the B up here. But if you watch live footage, it's really apparent they're playing that B here. Okay, so which means we lift our first finger to get the A. Okay, and then every time this riff plays, you don't palm mute that first uh, the first measure. And put your palm mute down on the, on the last three measures of the riff. So that stays consistent every time the riff plays. Now we just hit our B twice, lift off and hit an open A, two more times on the B. Hit the open A again as we move down to G and put your palm mute on. So third fret on the bottom string. Slide down one fret, back up. 
slide down one fret, up to the fifth fret, third fret, uh, back up to the fifth fret, third fret, down to the second fret, and then lift your first finger, back to the second fret. And then we hit an open A again, and then we can repeat. So really slow. The verse connects to the chorus of the two bar tag, and it's just hitting two Bs and an open A four times. We just do this. Okay, but to make it sound like the album, there's a couple of times that you're gonna want to shorten up that B by releasing the pressure with your fingers. And that happens on both the third and fourth times. I've indicated in the tab where to do that with the little staccato note underneath the chord is where you'll want to do that. So. And then we're into our chorus. Okay, so uh, our chorus goes B down to a G, D up on the fifth fret. We want to do a quick B here down to F sharp. So they're both on the second fret, a B jumping down to the F sharp on our second fret of the low string. So those two measures. Up to the G, E, open E power chord, F sharp. Okay, so you want to get a down, up, down, down, down. Okay, and put your hand down, release the pressure, make that one nice and short and get a, a measure or a beat of rest. Now we repeat with starting on our B on the second fret of the A string, G, up to the D, and then our B F sharp, G, E, and then our F sharp changes a little bit here again. And we're just doing straight 16th for two beats, one E and a two E and a three. Okay, and that's our chorus. This interlude section is pretty quick, so it can be tricky to get the timing just right, but you just wanna keep this picking consistent where you're going down and then up on the lower string. So you're, do this with your pinky so that you've got a pinky on the fourth fret of the D string, and then you're barring the second fret on the D string and the A string. So you can pick that note with your pinky and pull off and then use an upstroke to get that note on the A string. So if your picking hand is kind of sitting right, you don't have to move it like up or down to get those notes that are palm muted because every note on the A string is palm muted. But if your picking hand is right, you can just lay it properly so that, so that you got those palm muted notes. Okay. And then we do that for two measures. Okay, that fourth beat is just four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four and, okay, kind of tricky timing and it's really fast. So you really just have to practice it over and over and over until that feel of it starts sinking in. Okay, and then we repeat uh, that same idea, except we want to just move our fi first finger down a little bit so that the open A string is our bottom note. and then sneak that first finger back up for that bar. And there's four measures, and then those four measures repeat again exactly the same for a total of eight. And then we get back into another verse chorus with an interlude section, it all repeats the same way again. And then we get into our solo. So here is the riff that happens underneath the solo.
So getting into our solo riff, we connect out of the chorus with one measure of 5-4. And I've noticed live, they actually get rid of the 5-4 and they just put a measure of 4-4 in. And on the album, the, it's, they're hit slightly before the beat as you climb up chromatically to start the solo. We go one, two, three, a four, a five is right before. But if that was intentional or not, I doubt it. Um, if I was performing this live, I would just go one, two, three, four, five, right? Or you could just hit one, two, three, four. As they do live, they get rid of that fifth beat altogether. So um, you, you just climb up chromatically into uh, our C sharp on the fourth fret. And then we start our uh, solo riff by doing a little grace note hammer. We bar the fourth fret on the A and the D strings, and then we quickly hammer our pinky down. And you could do your third finger, I suppose, but I'm just showing what uh, James Hetfield does, and he uses his pinky when he does this. Uh, I find that it does make it a little bit easier. So. And we're getting into our 16th notes here again. So you just want to put a palm mute down on all these 4th frets as you chug away on those and then take the palm mute off whenever you do a, a, a chord stab. So 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a... Okay, so you, the picking is important here to keep the timing right. You want to end right there with a upstroke and take your pinky off so that you're barring the fourth frets. Okay, and then getting into measure two, we we take our pinky off with a pull off and then hammer it back down. And then we do our pull off again on beat three. And then two hits down, just moving our power chord down to the fourth fret on the low string. So those first two measures go like this. Okay, the uh, third measure starts off the same, so it's the exact same as our first measure. And the only thing that changes in our fourth measure is the last two beats. We just come down and do uh, quarter note triplets. Okay, and make them nice and short by lifting the pressure off with your fingers. So, all together, nice and slow, that section goes like this. And then that riff repeats once to make up our eight measure solo. But on the repeat, we change the fourth measure so that it sags nicely back into the main verse riff. And that fourth measure on the repeat will do this. One and a two, three, four, and then we're back into the main riff, so. And then we're back into it. Moving on to our final rhythm riffs, we just have to talk about the outro of the song, which is the second solo. So getting into the second solo, we just have a measure of 2-4 that connects out of the last chorus. It, going into the first solo is a measure of 5-4, if you'll remember. It was that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we're into it. But going out of the last chorus into the outro solo, uh, we just end our chorus. So we do away with that measure of 5-4, and we just have a measure of 2-4 to quickly connect. And we just play that riff underneath the solo six times, exactly how we played it underneath the first solo. Nothing changes except we're playing it six times. And then after we played it six times, we just tack on some more quarter note triplets. So we go, the, the last rotation. Okay, so at, at the end of that last rotation, we just quickly hop down to a B, down to the F sharp, and up to our C sharp.
The solo starts with our wah pedal on and two notes uh, fretted at the same time. We're gonna fret the 12th fret on the B string and the 11th fret with the G on the G string. And I do it with fingers two and three, but you can do whatever fingers you feel comfortable with. So you hit those and to add to the intensity of the riff, I like to give them some vibrato as well. Now, as far as the wah pedal goes, you start with the, uh, the toe up position and you slowly push the wah pedal down. So let's zoom in and take a look at that. And then once you get into the rest of the solo, you can work the wah pedal a little bit, or you can just leave it alone, just as long as that wah sounds a little, contributing a little bit to the tone, it's gonna to sound great. Now, we get into a nice little repeating lick here. We double pick the ninth fret on the B string, and then we hit from 12 and pull off to nine. And then the 11th fret on the G string, back up to the ninth fret on the B string. And then we just repeat that for a total of four times. Okay, then we get into another little repeating thing where we bend the 12th fret up, up to the ninth fret. And then, so we bend the 12th, hit the nine on the high string, come back down to the 12th uh, and pull off to nine. So there's another four notes that we repeat for a total of four times. Try to be really light with those bends. And then we come down our C sharp minor. And this whole thing is rooted in the C sharp minor pentatonic thus far. So we're gonna come down that pentatonic scale with some more fast uh, legato type licks. Okay, so we bend the 11th fret up to the 9th fret. Uh, do our little pull off from 12 to nine. Come down to the G string, 11, nine. Uh, 11 on the D string back up to the G string, pull off from 11 to nine, and then come down 11 to nine on the D string, 11 to nine on the A string. Okay, now we, uh, some more pentatonic stuff here. We slide down into nine on our low string, seven to nine, double pick our nine so that we can slide up to 11. Then we're up to our D string, 9, 11. And then we're gonna double pick our 11th fret to pull off to nine. Back down to the A string, the 11th fret. Nine and 11 on our D string again. And nine and 11 on our G string. That whole phrase. Okay, and our final little phrase of the solo, another little repeating pentatonic thing, very similar to what we started with. We pull off from nine, uh, 11 to nine on the G string, down to the 11th on the D string, back up to the nine on the G string, and repeat those. And now we slide up into a 16th position, and it, he does do a little inflection on that 18th fret as he slides up, but don't be too concerned with getting an exact whole step bend. More you just want to slide up and just get a little effect um, by slightly nudging the string as you move up because it's going by so fast it's going to be very hard to get a true full step bend. And up to the 16th fret and then bend the 19th fret. And now we're doing what's kind of a, a unison bend type thing. Okay, so we're hitting our 16th fret on the high string at the same time as we bend our 19th fret. And we're gonna get a total of three bends in there. Okay, then we're gonna hit our 16th fret again, 19th fret pull off. And then we come down to our B string and go 19 to 16. So there'll be three hits on the 16th fret. 19 to 16. Another pull off from 19 to 16. Down to the 18th fret on the G string up to 16, one more pull off between 19 and 16, and a whole step bend on 19 to finish it off, and you wanna cut it off nice and abrupt, it's a really short bend. So our last two measures sound like this.
Our outro solo starts with some fast pentatonic repeating stuff again. So we're starting in our C sharp minor uh, pentatonic box again on the ninth fret here. And we want to do some pull offs between 12 and 9. So we're going to start on our high string and pull off from 12 to 9, followed by the B string 12 to 9. So you just want to bar correctly across the ninth fret with your first finger, and it's pretty easy to do. And just use all downstrokes. One and two and three and four and... Just two measures uh, of that. Now measure three is where some craziness starts that we really have to talk about. And it's not important to play these notes exactly the same. He never plays it the same way twice live. It's more just an overall effect that you're going for. A fast, chromatic, falling down the string type effect. But uh, I wanted to really wrap my head around what was on the album so that I had something to teach you, to show you, uh, rather than just let's flail our fingers along. So this is what I came up with. This is what I hear when I slow it down and I listen to it quite a bit. Uh, I'm hearing really uh, the key to this is keeping straight sixteenths going with your picking hand. And then the extra notes that come in are a result of falling down the string and our finger is kind of falling down the string and introducing more notes in between our pick strokes. But you're still really just thinking and feeling 16th notes. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to put some tab on that's simplified so that if you think about this and as you practice this idea, it'll start to become clear. Uh, so I'm thinking this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one. So there's our measure, okay? Now, as I said, if you think about that, uh, as you're playing, uh, those extra notes are just going to naturally inject themselves into the line and it'll sound faster and cooler and smoother because you're smoothly sliding from note to note and those extra notes are gonna creep in through, uh, between your pick strokes. Okay. Okay, now that's that's how I'm thinking about it and creating that sound. Now, you don't have to do this exact, like I said, but I, I am hearing that ninth fret on beat four again, which is why I'm reaching my pinky up, because I'm kind of hearing him do that four and one. And we're out of that whole chromatic little thing. So there's what I play, and... Uh, like I said, I wouldn't be too concerned with uh, nailing it note for note, but you can come up with your own little figure that you want to do. As long as you're picking 16th notes there, it's going to sound great and it's going to come out fine. So moving on into our next phrase, we start with, uh, as we've gotten down our string, we now are in this position where we're fretting four and seven. And it's a little repeating pentatonic thing that's uh, not too dissimilar to some of the other stuff that we've already done. Pull off from seven to four, uh, seven on the B string. Back up to four on the E string, and then seven four on the high string, and seven four twice on the B string. Six four. With a little bend on it. Okay, now we get into a little double stop thing. It's really fast, so it might take you a little while just to really feel the rhythm of this, but you want to pick six on the D string, four on the G string, and then do that twice. So six, four, six, and then we're gonna hit fret double stops. So you want the fourth fret on the B and the G string. And we do that a total of three times. And then we go back to our sixth fret, roll that third finger so that you're fretting six on both the G and the B, and then back to the fourth fret. Okay, and then we're going six, four again on the D and G strings. Do a bend on the 6th fret, up to the B string, 7, pull off, pull off from 6 to 4 on the G string, 6 on D, back up to the G string for, for a 4, and then a 6, 4, pull off, 6, 4, pull off on the D string, and then a 6, 4 on the A string. So that measure sounds like this. Into our next measure, slide into four, two four on the A string, sliding into the sixth on the A string. Okay, four, six, double pick that six to pull off, back to four, down to six on the A string, four on the D string, six on the D string, four and six on the G string. Okay. 
And now to get this next measure just right, you wanna put a little, really pick hard on that downbeat and even get a little bit of a pinch harmonic there. And you can yank the string a little bit, okay? Okay, and that's just our little repeating thing that we've done a couple of other times, but now we're just doing it on uh, six and four of the G and D string. So six and four, pull off, down to the six on the D string, back up to four. Okay, now into our next phrase, we're going to slide into nine and 11 on the G string. Now this is some quick bends here. I noticed live, he doesn't play this quite the same as he did on the album. He actually has removed a couple of the notes, uh, but it, to play it how he does on the album, we do this. So we wanna go up, bend 11, and then bar, kind of roll up the ninth fret, and then bend the 12th on the B string. And then we wanna go, it's important to start with an upstroke here. We go back to nine, start with an upstroke, and then bend the 11th fret, back up to the high nine, so there's a string skip there, ninth fret high, back to the 12th fret bend. So it's like this. And then you wanna bend that twice. And then you just repeat that phrase, but put three bends in the second time. So uh, those two measures together would be like this. Okay, and then we get into uh, our next little phrase, and that is 12 to nine on the B string, and two more picks on the nine. So 12 pull off to nine, and then two picks on nine. Then we repeat that pull off, go up to the high string and do that pull off, back to the B string and do that 12 to nine pull off. And then we come down to the 12th fret on the G string. It's kind of a cool little effect. It's a the blues note in the, in the, in the blue scale. It's the first and only time that he does it in both of the solos in this song. And it's a really cool little effect when he puts it in there. Okay, then we come back up to nine, 12 to nine pull off, 11 to nine on the G string, double pick nine, 11 to nine pull off again, and move down to the D string, 11 to nine, pull off, two more hits on the nine, 11 to nine pull off, and then 11 to nine on the A string. And you can nudge it a little bit. And then we quickly jump up. You gotta be really quick with this. Jump all the way up back to the 16th uh, position. And we're gonna do that unison bend type stuff again. We start with a nine, 16, and then unison bend, up pick, 16, unison bend, up pick 16, unison bend. Okay, so there's a little repeating there. And then we get into our uh, signature Kirk Hammett stuff here to finish off the solo. He likes to throw these little figures in a lot in his soloing. So really work hard on these ones because you're gonna find them popping up a lot in his playing. So we hit up pick on the 16th fret, uh, pull off from 19 to 16, down to 19 on the B string, up to 16. Then this is a really cool little pull off thing that I like that he does. 19 to 16, use your pinky to get up to the 21st fret pull off to 16, back to 19 to 16. Okay. And then we go down to 19 on the B string, up to 16 on the E string, repeat these pull offs. 19, 16. And now we get into a new little repeating thing, which I really like. It's similar to what he did in uh, Jump in the Fire too, in oh, the outro solo there. So we go from 19 to 16 on the E string and the B string. Then we bend the G string up on the 18th fret. And then you do a 16, 19 to 16, pull off, back up to 19 to 16, pull off on the high string, back down to 19 to 16, bend. And it's just, and so it's just that repeating thing, right? Okay, so the last uh, measures of the solo go like this. And then you just end uh, with uh, three bands on the 19th fret. So we come out of that repeating thing by bending eight, 18, 16, 19 to 16 pull off, 19 to 16 pull off on the high string, 
19 on the B string, 16 on the high string, and then our three 19 fret bands. And that's the song. And at the very end of the solo, over the last couple of measures, another lead guitar is overdubbed and you hear a big pick slide. Okay, so all that we're doing is we're taking our pick, the flat edge, putting it perpendicular to the low E and A strings and just sliding down the string. Okay, and it sounds nice and big and huge on the recording because they put some flange on there. So duplicate that and you got her made. You now know every single guitar part in Metallica's Motor Breath. So there's how to play Motor Breath by Metallica on guitar. Remember to subscribe for even more Metallica as well as plenty of other songs by your favorite artists, all with Professional Guitar Tab provided. Let me know all other songs that you want to learn by dropping me a comment and I'll see you next time.